Right. So anything past a two-body problem, we kind of have to use numerical methods in order to solve them. So I also want to get into then numerical solvers because there's a bunch of different ones out there. So can we start with basically how to solve differential equations using computers? Can we start with kind of some fundamental differences between, say, a Runcutta method of solving differential equations versus an Adams method? Yeah. Um, so the, the, the most important thing to understand is that all of the numerical methods are for solving ordinary differential equations are all of kind of doing the same thing. Uh, if you, what everyone knows is if you take an integral of something uh, in a school, uh, everyone knows that is the area under the curve. Uh, that's why it's familiar to most people who have taken high school calculus. And most people know that if you had just your X and your Y axis and you paint some arbitrary curve uh, somewhere in between X0 and X1, that if you wanted to calculate the area under that curve, there's many ways you could do it. And one of them is to make a small uh, rectangles that go from the origin and touch on the curve. And then you make the rectangle a little bit small. And then you just make a bunch of little rectangles that you know the area of each one of them. They will all have potentially different height, but you can make them so that they have the same base width. So then you just multiply the, multiply the base times the height. For one tiny rectangle, you get a little bit of the area, you get the other one, and then you just add it all up and you could get the area under that curve. So that would be the integral. And then as you start playing with that idea on paper, uh, anyone who's a little bit clever will start saying, okay, instead of a rectangle, I'm gonna use some sort of irregular trapeze. I'm gonna start at the base, touch one uh, point of the curve, then I'm gonna trace a line to the other point of the curve, even if, it, if it's not quite flat, even if it's a little bit slanted, and then I'm gonna go down to the origin. So they would have like these little trapeze looking things and they would be more clever. And then other people would say, okay, but I want to use very narrow rectangles when I'm in a very fast varying part of the function and a very broad rectangle when I'm in this uh, very quiet part of the function. And then some people would say, instead of using rectangles, use a, you know, a quadratic polynomial or a cubic polynomial to fit the function in that area. And people could start throwing a bunch of ideas on how to make this physical process of measuring the area under a curve more accurate using less work. So people would say, I want it to be as accurate as possible, doing as little, as little work as, as possible. So that is the only thing that all the numerical solvers for ordinary differential are doing. That's the only, and it sometimes surprises people, but that's what they do. When you have a runge cuda method, what you have is a, a polynomial approximation to a function given by a certain number of function evaluations. Sometimes you evaluate it once, uh, in which case you would call it Euler's method. You just say, I'm here, then just give one step forward and then tell me, and this literally just the rectangle that I spoke about, it just makes that and it just adds this all up. Then you can have a second order method that will evaluate it at two points. Uh, and then whether it's implicit or explicit, it has to do with whether the point that you're trying to know it in advance or not, uh, or whether it's an implicit equation. And then you, you can say that now use a cubic polynomial, use a fourth order polynomial and so on. So when you have, I have an RK4 method, for example, it's a runge cuda method uh, of, that uses these four function evaluations to have this cubic polynomial pass and, and evaluate the things. Most of them, uh, when they are expressed like that, uh, without any more information, you have to assume that they are fixed steps that every time that, but obviously you don't want that. You want something that adapts itself. So you end up with things like the most famous of them all, which is the RK45, uh, which is called RK45 in MATLAB but it was uh, is a runge cuda fourth and fifth order. Uh, the way it does it is it solves it in fourth order with one width of that rectangle, uh, with one step size. Then it solves it in fifth order, and then it compares the two. If they are very similar, it takes a longer step because like, okay, I'm good. 
my fourth order approximation and my fifth order approximation are the same. So I can take a longer step, therefore getting to the end faster. Or the opposite can happen. It does a fourth order step, then it does a fifth order step, and it sees that they are different, that the solution is different. It's like, oops, okay, I gotta go back and make my step smaller. These are called adaptive step size. And the difference between uh, Ronge CUDA method, which is, is not a method, it's a family of methods. Uh, again, there's so many that I could not even talk about. Uh, what changes the order of them, which is kind of the polynomial to, to create this little approximation. And the Adams method is that the Adams methods are based in this linear combination of approximations. So the Adams method is kind of, it has a line and then it has also like a quadratic and then it has like a cubic and it linearly combines the solutions um, to, to get to, to the same approximation. So the way in which that internal approximation is made on the one hand and on the other hand, the strategy to adapt the step size is what makes them different. But again, underneath, they are all exactly the same idea. Try to take the most accurate area under a curve, quote unquote, by using the fewest number of steps. So can you talk to about- reduce computation. Mm -hmm. okay. So can you talk about kind of why, say for overall mechanics, it's beneficial to use the Adams method over a runge kata method? Yeah, I would say it's just experience. Um, you, you've heard about Diva, the propagator uh, written by Fred Krog, uh, JPL, 45 years ago. Uh, and they have, uh, for the problem of the motion in orbital mechanics, where you have a point mass subject to uh, increasing collection of forces in a sail, like you can have something that departs from Earth but then goes to Neptune. So you end up with, in the order of one astronomical unit to the order of 30 astronomical units. And you need to find the vents and you need to propagate many forces. For that, uh, Fred really tuned the Adams method and proved that they were more reliable than the Rush Cutas available at the time. And this is very important, at the time when Fred Krog wrote DIVA. And again, DIVA has been used to fly many billion dollars worth of spacecraft have been flown with that software. Uh, and it's now retired, uh, JPL, as you know, uh, rewrote DIVA in C++ and it's just called Adams Propagator because it uses an Adams method uh, or linear multi-step method. It's also what it's called, um, but, but it's, it's the same, same thing. So we have just seen in practice that these, the properties of the Adams methods of the linear multi-step methods for very broad, uh, very broad uh, scale of numbers, again, from very tiny things, Earth, Moon, to the scale of the solar system, uh, where, you, where you have a lot of forces and the speed with which the dynamics vary are better than the Runge Cuda. So I just want to be specific. There is nothing intrinsically better of Adams versus Runge Cuda in general. Like there's no one could say Adams methods are better than Runge Cuda methods. That cannot be said at all. Because for every example that you give me of one, I could give you an example of the other. It's just that in orbital mechanics, for the kind of work we do, it has been observed that Adams is more reliable. Uh, it could also be that we have a little bit of a bias and we just have never had a Runge Cuda that is as fully featured as an Adams method. Now there's other things that have to do with stability of a numerical method that has to do with whether it's good for stiff systems or it isn't. I mean, we could, I mean, there's obviously people who dedicate their entire lives to study numerical integrators. So we cannot get into all of that, but uh, we have observed that Adams is better for our kind of problems. Uh, and there's nothing keeping us from investigating high order Runge-Cuda methods. Mm -hmm.